Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we've got guest co-host once again, Mr. Rich Catino from Metal Asylum, Brave Words and Bloody Knuckles, and the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. Welcome once again, my friend. How are you today? What's up? Thank you for having me again. This is a, a great episode. I mean, the Camelot one was cool, too. But, wow, Halloween, I go back to back to buying the Judas EP on yep. vinyl and Jericho. Like, I have, these are all originals from the 80s when I bought the moose. They were all imports, too, and I grabbed those pretty quick. Yep. So, yeah, Rich and I were long, talking right before we went on the air about how we both went and bought all these LPs, all this vinyl yeah. back in the day. I bought all of mine, I think, at Rock Fantasy in Middletown, New York. And I don't have the vinyls anymore, but yeah, that's, I remember remember them well. Yeah, I'm glad I kept 90 percent of my albums from the '80s. I kept. I, I remember when the EPs came out. It's like you know, all I saw was like this pumpkin creature on the cover. Hadn't heard a yeah. lick of the music, and I just bought it sight unknown. Yeah. Right. Well, the, the pumpkin, the pumpkin with Fang Face coming out of it. Yep. Which yep. Later went on to Pi into Gamma Ray. Right? Yep. That yeah. was very cool. How that, it's like all in the family, you know? Yeah. And I think a lot of us metalheads back in the day, we were like all over those Halloween albums because I think to us, we were already Maiden fans, right? We were used to having that kind of like that, that mascot creature be like right. representative of one of our favorite bands. So I like took to Halloween instantly because they had a similar type creature on the front and the music kicked ass. And, you know, some of those early albums are kind of, they're kind of Maidenish in a weird way, but uh I mean, these guys, like, for me, spearheaded the whole speed metal, power metal genre as we know it today. I mean, without Halloween, Absolutely. I don't think it would have been the same, right? I don't know. I think they, they, it was them, not so much, like, I don't know if you see my jacket still, Gravedigger and Running Wild. Now, Gravedigger, not so much, Running Wild a little bit later when they did the, the pirate thing. Yep. And Gravedigger did it more in the 90s when it became more power metal. But I would say definitely Halloween, of course, is the top one. And then Gravedigger and, and Running Wild, too, especially later. Yep, absolutely. And, if and you then, notice... of, course, of course, you got Blind Guardian and Ice Earth, who both put out a record or two in the 80s. Yep, very late. Same thing with Stradivarius. So they're all late 80s guys yep. that were you know, pioneers as well. Yep, absolutely. I was yeah. just remarking on uh, Rich's jacket over his other shoulder there. Very cool. Jericho. <clears throat> Patch. There you go. The things you can still see it. Yeah, I wish I still had mine. Man, I, 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 had brought one up, too. I brought up my production value from the Camelot episode. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking at uh, 15 studio albums here today. We're not going to include like the uh, rehashed hits or the acoustic stuff. We're just doing the 15 studio albums of all new material. Right, uh, like not unarmed. Right. Which was great. Very cool different reworked versions of their songs. And then they had the metal jukebox with the yep. covers. Yep, the covers. Yeah. Also kind of interesting, yep. Very, yeah, very yep. cool. Chose their versatility. That's right, that's right. So uh, we're gonna rank them as we like them. Uh, Rich and I have not compared notes, so I don't know what he's picked and vice versa. So I'm gonna have Rich kick us off with his number 15. Okay, I just flip flop my 15 and 14 within the past like 10 minutes. <laughs> But I'm going with Keeper Part 3. Wow, okay. I thought that was just a letdown compared to the first two. I mean, it's, it's two how, how albums. How could it not be, though? You know, how could it not be? I know. And it's so long after the fact. And I think they just weren't in that groove anymore. It was too long of an album. It's two discs. Um, the songs are just not as memorable for me. I like King of a Thousand Years. That's really epic. The Invisible Man, uh, the, shadow, uh, the Shade in the Shadow, has some spunk to it, I said. Um, but I think it's more quantity over quality. For that it might album. have been more successful as a single album. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A little too well, we'll, much. we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of these bands, and especially metal bands, who like go and revisit like a classic album and do a sequel to it like, you know, 10, 15, 20 years later. You know, why right. bother? That's not, if you're not going to follow it up immediately, and sometimes do you even need to, right? Right. Like uh, Gamma Ray did it with uh, Land of the Free Part 2. That was okay. Not great, but it was, it was okay. 
Look what happened with Queens right when they I tried was just going to say, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Operation Monk Crime. What a dud that was. Terrible. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. So it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. In fact, in most yeah. cases, it doesn't work. <laughs> you got to be in that zone at that time. And right. That's it. that's why the, the first two keepers work so well, because they one came right after the other, even though they're yep, each exactly. a little different from each other, you know. So well, I'm sure we'll talk more are, about that which, later, which I'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So my number 15, I'm going to go with 1991's Pink Bubbles Go Ape. Wow. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this album. It's OK. You know what it is? None of these albums are really bad. Uh, I just yeah. this to me. They are going in, you know, they had the two Keepers albums, which are fantastic. Here they're going for more like straightforward melodic metal stuff, which is, yeah. it's okay. I mean, really is. I think half the album is actually quite good. Uh, some uh -huh. of it, not so good. I mean, Kids of the Century, really mm -hmm. memorable tune. Love that a lot. Back on the Streets, more of like a straight hard rock track, but it's kind of, you know, real catchy. Heavy Metal Hamsters, yeah. really silly, but fun, right? Dollar Home, home. <laughs> also a good hard rock tune. Uh, yeah, I love someone's crying. That's just like, yep. I mean, it's got guitars flying all over the place, you know, really good power metal track, probably the best song on the album. Uh, but I, like I think, Mankind also. yeah, Mankind exactly. Is great. Yep. Yep. I don't know for me, it's got, you know, it's just uh, half of it really works. Half of it kind of doesn't. I think Kiski sounds tremendous on it. I think both of those two yes. latter period Kiski era albums, he sounds great on yes. the music is just so different on him. I think that's why a lot of fans really were down on these albums when they first came out. Um, you know, this is also uh, uh, Roland Grap, Grap House first album with the band, I believe. Right? No, after, he's on the next. He's that's on the, the next one. one. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that's gotcha. The last one. So this is the last with Kai, right? Okay. Yeah. But, I uh, never. You know, that's funny about that album. I. What's the beginning? What's like? What is Kiski doing? Like that whole little nursery rhyme thing in the beginning i have no idea i mean it's called pink bubbles go ape so it's bizarre to begin with right and that's well, another like, thing like like what is the beginning pink bubbles go ape and then you look the album cover doesn't it just the title is yeah. terrible the album cover is terrible uh, you know whatever but, so uh, surreal yeah very strange I, you know i just remember you know being uh you know i mean god when this came out in 91 so i was what uh 25 right yeah so I remember, you know, loving the uh, the Keepers albums, and then this came out, and I'm like, "Yeah, what happened? What happened here? Right? There's like a little bit of a disconnect." But you yeah. know, it was the it was the early '90s, right? Things were changing really quick, really quickly. They were, they were. So, and I think, from what I remember, that album, Chameleon, really didn't come out here as much as the two Keeper albums. They might have been. I don't know if they were really an import yet, or I know Chameleon, I didn't see for a while. Yeah, I Maybe think they so. were both imports initially, yeah, for whatever reason, yeah. which is really strange when you think about it, because both the Keepers albums did pretty well here. Yeah. Go figure. Yep. Yeah. All right, back to you, number 14. All right, 14 is, uh, oh, not that album, uh, My uh, God Given Right. I don't have the cover with me. I got the download, but I went with that one. That's the most recent one. Yes, that one. I hate the album cover. I think that I hate that digital art with the the snow and the, and the pumpkins. Everything's very stiff and and yeah. monochromatic, and it's got no. I don't, I don't know. As a, as an art teacher myself, I just can't get into that cover at all. It's one of my least favorite ones by them. Yeah. Um, but a couple songs on there I do like, like Heroes, Battle One, uh, Battles One. The title track is really cool. Lost in America. Um, you still war, I think is really good. That's one of the best ones on the album. It's a seven minute song. So it's got its parts that I'll go back to, but it's not an album that I'll, I would put up there in my, in my 10 or close to it. Yeah, exactly. More on that in a minute. Um, and yeah, that cover, I mean, it just, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and they got, you know, they have the Statue of Liberty on there. It's yeah. just like, what is that? I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, um, it's so stiff. And I don't like the way the pumpkin guy looks on top. He looks like a, a bad robot. Yeah. It's just, there's, everything is wrong about that design wise. <laughs> yeah. That album was not very well liked when it came out by a lot of longtime fans. I don't know if their yeah. stance on it has softened since, cause that, that's, you know, how many years ago? That was, that was five years ago already. But yeah, uh, right. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's okay. Right. As we'll it's talk got, about it's it. Got yeah. 
So my number 14, this was originally at the bottom of my list. Uh, but as I went and we listened to all this stuff again, I was like, you know what? As weird as this album is and as shockingly different as this album is, I think if you call this anything other than a right. Halloween album, it might actually be looked at a lot more fondly today than it actually is. So I'm, so I'm talking about Chameleon from 93. Yes. Uh, there are some tremendous songs on here. Mm -hmm. They're just not really Halloween type songs, right? But they're really good yes. songs. I mean, you got When the Sinner, catchy, yes. great chorus. I mean, even the horns and yes. the synths work. It's not really metal, but it's like, yep. but it's a great song. Um, you know, I don't want to cry yes. no more, kind of a sappy ballad, you know, with the acoustic guitars and the synths, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You got uh, Crazy Cat, it's kind of like this weird, funky jazz metal song, more horns, kind of almost sounds like the straight they cat. Have that. Yeah, I know. It's, they always have that song like a Dr. Steen. Or yeah, like a really God. silly song. Yeah. yeah. Silly title, and it's very catchy and poppy. They had that on almost every album. Yeah, exactly. It, it sounds to me like the Stray Cats, though. It's, you know, whatever. Yes. But yeah. uh, then you got Giants and First Time. Both of those are just ripping Halloween type tracks. No, they don't play Giants in their set. Yeah, I know, right? So yep. um, those are great songs. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't like Windmill. That's boring, lifeless ballad. Uh, Revolution Now is a weird song because it kind of sounds almost like Beatles ish and like meets yes. Queensryche. In, in fact, I think a lot of this album. Uh, to me, kind of sounds like what Queensryche were doing with Rage for Order. Like they were really trying yeah. to do something different. Uh, it didn't yes. always work, though, you know. Um, in but, the uh, Night's kind of folky. Uh -huh. Music. Kind of like um, music's great, too. It's awesome. Big, yes. epic. I think, you know, quite frankly, I think music is the best song on the album. And it's even kind of proggy. It's just absolutely tremendous, mm -hmm. tremendous song. Uh, and one of his one of best vocals, I think. Um, what yeah. else? Step Out of Hell is a good tune. Uh, I Believe is also really good. I don't know. Like I said, you it's... You seem to like a lot of songs. I'm surprised. You seem to like a lot of songs. I'm surprised it's so low then. Well, you know what it is? I, the songs I like, I really like. The songs I don't like, I don't like at all. Um, uh -huh. I just, like I said, yeah. I mean, this could rank higher because the, the couple tracks that I really do like are really, really good. Uh, I just think right. it's just a really weird album, and uh, you know, it alienated a lot of a lot of the fans. And then you know, you blinked, and Kiski yeah. and Ingo Schrichtenberg were gone, right? And uh, time right. to kind of reimagine the band. But like you know, I think it holds up a little better than we all remember it. And for the folks maybe who are watching, who kind of threw this in the garbage can back in you know '93. Go back and check it out. It's actually not as bad as you might remember it. Some of it is bad, but some of it is, is actually really damn good. And I give them, you know, kudos to them for trying something a little bit different. Yeah. Yep. All right. Number 13. What do you got? I got Seven Sinners. Wow. Okay. You seeing it or are you getting a little glare there? Oh, I see it. Yeah, I see it. Okay. So this one... It's a pretty heavy album. Really heavy album. <laughs> really, really heavy. Very, very um, speed metal. Uh, but I think it's a little one-dimensional. But they do have another, you know, album that has some good songs on it. It's got a rough production too. It's got a heavier, grittier production. Oh yeah. But yeah. Um, like where the sinners go is great. I like the single "Are You Metal." That was cool. Uh, World of Fantasy is catchy. Uh, the Sage, The Fool, The Sinner is really good. Uh, but the rest of it is all really, aside from, I think, the ballad is what? The Smile of the Sun, I think? Uh, I think so, yeah. So everything else is pretty balls to the wall heavy. So for that reason, that's why I put it at, where are we at? We're at 13. So that's why I put it at 13, because it just lacks some of their variety that they have in their other albums that makes some other albums stronger. Fair enough. Okay. My number 13? 13. It seems like our lists are going to be completely different from each other. I think so, and that's okay. I think we kind of did the same thing on the, the Camelot one. That's, that actually makes for better viewing for our uh, our fans out there. So exactly. my God-given rights, number 13, I agree with everything you said. Uh, I think this album is um, more filler than we normally get from these guys. I mean, you know, it's like most, yeah. even their, well, most of their albums have a couple tunes that are kind of like, yeah, they're all right. But I think this album, another one of those, half of it's pretty damn good. Half of it's kind of like, 
eh, that's all right. So, but uh, you mentioned Heroes, Battles Won, Lost in America, the title track, uh, You Still of War is big and epic. Got a lot of kind of prog metally flourishes going on. Uh, yeah. It's a really long album, too many it tracks. Is. And I think for me, and yeah, this kind of mechanical pumpkin guy is just ridiculous. Horrendous. Uh, Horre so Did anybody pick? I, I watched your your bad albums from from bands. Did anybody throw that one in there? I don't remember. No, but I should have. I forgot all about uh, these guys because you know most of their album covers are pretty cool, but this one definitely is not yeah. one of them. Yeah, I'm yeah. surprised Nick Franco didn't pick uh, this one because I know he's uh -huh. a big Halloween fan. But uh, yeah, I don't know. You know what? I get I get a kind of like been there, done that feel with this album, and that's yeah. uh, it's not bad by any means, but it's just kind of like it's kind of lacking a little something. Um, yeah, it's the last one too before the reunion of of the band as well. So yeah, maybe so the we'll writing see. was on the wall. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Maybe they need a little bit of something fresh coming in. So, but not a bad album. Just not one of their more memorable albums. It's, it's one of the ones, like I said, with the other ones, I can pick and choose a few here and there, but not an album that I want to go through the whole thing. Yeah, that I really like all the songs. Yep, exactly, exactly. All right, number twelve. What do you got? Twelve is. The Dark Ride. Definitely um, kind of controversial because it's a very dark album. Yeah. Their their tuning is a little lower too. Yeah. The production's a little rougher again. Still has some great songs that I really like that I always go back to. Uh, Mr. Torture is just a classic Halloween great. song. Great. Mirror Mirror is really heavy. I love that riff. Yep. Yeah. It's good. If I Could Fly is a great ballad. Um. We Damn the Night's Cool. It's got a good grind to it. Um, funny that that one and Mirror Mirror is a Darius song. He does a lot of good writing with the band. Yeah, he does. He does. He always has. Um, and I like the title track, which is a Roland Grappow song. And he's also got a lot of good writing credits that I always favor his songs as well. Well, I mean, so, he's a great player, and he went on to Master Plan and did a lot of great yeah. stuff over there, too, you know? so. Yep. It's a big, big so, loss yeah, when he was, left. What's that? A big loss when he left, when Roland left, mm -hmm. I thought, at the time. So, you know, again, there's, you know, four or five that I'll go back to, but I won't go back to all of them. You know, like, I'm not really into The, the Departed or I Live your, um, I live For Your Pain. Um, Escalation 666 is okay. So it's very spotty for me. Again, yep. I think it's just too dark. Um. I don't like the sound of the guitars. Yep. So it's not, in my, it's not in my 10. I know a lot of people really like this album and I see the reasons why, but on a whole, it doesn't work for me. Well, we're on the same page. It's my number 12 as well. Um, okay. I don't like the production on this album and I normally like anything that Roy Z works on. Uh, yeah. I find this, the production of this album really kind of suffocating. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't sound like all the other albums. Uh, it doesn't you know, have that lot, great brightness to it. Yeah, like not at all. Not at all. And it's like, and the guitars don't have that big crunch like they normally do. Uh, it's yeah. like you said, it's very dark sounding, but there are some good songs. I mean, you mentioned all the good songs. Mr. Torture, Mirror, Mirror, I Like All Over the Nations is pretty cool. Immortal is a cool song. We Damn the Night. But overall, I, to me, that album kind of like sticks out a little bit from all the other ones. Yeah. It just, you know, we talked about uh, how Chameleon sounds so different. I think this album also sounds really different from a lot of the other ones. And uh, like I said, it's not a bad album by any means, but um, not one of the ones I go back to often. Yeah, not one of the ones I would put in my 10 or my five. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, next up. So 11, I picked Straight Outta Hell which has a, a pretty cool cover. It's a great cover. It is a great cover. I wish it was a, a painting, though, because it's one of those digital arts. So yeah. it's a little flat. But conceptually, it's cool. I like it. Um, the songs, let's see what's on that one. Hold on, I got to keep going back to the track listing. It's too many, too many to remember. And I, I always forget. <laughs> and I always forget something. So I got to go, I got to go back to some of these albums. Well, it's a so, lot of albums and a lot of songs on every album. That's what it is, yes. right? Uh, Nebatia is excellent. Oh, that is a great classic, song. A classic rager that just just blows out of the speakers Halloween. Yep. I love it. Um, 
Burning Sun is a great song. Waiting for the Thunder is really cool. Mm-hmm. They actually did that on the reunion tour. Yep. Remember? That was oh, in yeah. there? Yep. So that's a cool one. The Straight Out of Hell is cool. Um, but the other ones, I don't really go back to them. I noticed, too, though, that with the Halloween albums past probably the Dark Ride, the second half of the album doesn't live up to the first half. Well, I mean, that's, so like, that's the problem that I always like, talk about. It's like bands in the CD age feel they need to make these 65, 70-minute albums all the time with 12, yeah. 13, 14 songs. And right. it's like by the time you get like three quarters of the way through, you're, you're feeling fatigue a little bit. And I think yeah. I wish bands would get back to, it's like, you know what? Let's put forth hey, there's our birds best. Over here. <laughs> What's that? I'm outside to hear the birds. No. Okay. There's a, there's a flock of birds in the middle of the, like, it's dark out. They should have done this hours ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you're saying, it's, it's, it's 13 songs, but like the bottom half, the last quarter of it, like the song Asshole and Years and Make Fire, Catch Fly and uh, Church Breaks Down, I, I could do without them. Yeah. Yeah. Too many tracks. I wish every band would just, you know, eight to 10 tracks. That's it. Done. Yeah. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need. So, uh, yeah, uh, I like this better than Dark Ride. Um, but again, it's one of the ones I, I pick and choose what I yep. want to take from it. The first half is really good with uh, yeah. Burning Sun and Waiting for the Thunder and um, uh, Live Now is good. And Nebatia, like I said, such a great opener. That's always, oh, yeah. in, my, it's always in my playlists. They, uh, I did a um, top 10 Halloween songs show a while back with a couple other guys and um and we were all of the opinion that halloween has some of the best album openers of any metal band i mean so many of their albums just kind of burst through with these kick-ass tracks you know it's like it's always great you you know you're in for a wild ride as soon as you as soon as you hit the play button it's like really good stuff so getting back to our long albums uh kind of discussion here uh my number 11 is uh keeper of the seven keys the legacy Mm-hmm. From 2005, so you like, like, well, like a little bit better than, than you, yeah. Um, it's got its issues, right? Uh, first of all, did they need to even go there? I think you know, again, all those years later, probably not. Yeah. Uh, you know, but some of it works. I mean, it's a double album. It didn't need to be a double album. Uh, here you right. got, you know, obviously Andy Darris now is doing the Keeper stuff in place of Kiski all those years before. A lot of epic mm-hmm. moments on here. I think the King for a Thousand Years is amazing. Uh, the yes. Invisible Man is amazing. I love Light the Universe. Uh, Occasion Avenue is another really strong track, but mm-hmm. there's just there's too much of it. And some of it kind of drags, and some of it's trying to be a little too experimental just to be experimental. I think yeah. this would have been a much better single album, weed out the couple filler tracks, and then, you know what? This might even rank pretty close up to the other Keys albums if you kind of mm-hmm. pare this down a little bit. I like the production on it. The playing is great. The vocals are great. It's just, it's just too much. I love the album cover, which is killer. But uh, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Very digital, though. Favorites. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's it's very cool. digital. Very flat. I like. I prefer when it's a little more got a little more texture to it, and it, it's a painting. Yeah, and it's kind of dark, right? But um, I don't know. I think it could have been better. I, I, you know, hey, they went and did it. It's not awful. So uh, you know, but right. I think it uh, would have been a much better single album. And then I probably would have ranked it a little bit higher because I think the stuff I like on there, I like a lot. So Yeah. Okay. We're at the top 10, right? Top 10, yep. Top 10, all right. Is everybody sitting down? <laughs> <laughs> Chameleon is in my 10. Wow, okay. Well, you know what? I can kind of see that, yeah. It's in my, and I never I had the same issues with it growing up like you did. But now, as I've gotten older, I've appreciated it because after hearing what they did with Unarmed and all the different interpretations of the songs on there, you can see where they were doing this already on Chameleon. Because they had, let's see, what's on, uh, the like the, the megaphone was on, the one song for When the Sinner, right? With the yep. horns at the end. Yep. So they were doing some weird things on Chameleon even though it wasn't maybe a great Halloween album for them at the time, if you want a great Halloween album now, compared to the rest of their, their history, this really shows their diversity and their versatility. Yep. Yep. So I, I, that's why I put that in my 10. So first time 
uh, when the center giants, like you said, um, music is great. Step out of hell. Um, I can go through the whole album pretty much and just enjoy it for what it is. It's kind of like I see, I now see um, Chameleon and Pink Bubbles as Kisses Unmasked and Dynasty. Yeah, that's a good comparison. That's a good because comparison. Because those have the same issues for trying to branch out, doing different things. It's a little more commercial, a little more poppy. But I mean, Unmasked is one of my favorite Kiss albums. It's in my top five. Wow. Because okay. It's, because it's so good for what it is, and there's such great songs, even though it was a, a change at the time. I think for me, if you take Pink Bubbles, Go Ape, and uh, Chameleon, and if yeah. I take the best, my favorite songs of both albums and put them and combine them for one album, that's a pretty good album. album. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It really is. It is. So, yeah. cool. So yeah, I, I, think for yeah I, I, I can't fault you for doing it. I mean, you know, it's like, like I said, I, when I was getting ready to do this, I was expecting that was going to be the bottom album. And then I went and re-listened to it again. I was like, man, this is not as bad as I always thought it was, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I guess we, we mellow as we get older, right, Rich? I mean, this is the way it happens. But, but I think, though, for your reasons, it makes sense because it's not a good album for Halloween. But yeah. then again, I saw it from my perspective. I was like, but it's a great album because it shows what, Halloween is capable of because everybody thinks that power metal bands are a one trick pony and they're really not. Right. Right. Many of them. Are not. So you gotta, so that's why I had to put it in my tent. I think this, it deserves more respect. Yeah. And you have to wonder if Halloween would have released an album like that back in 2005, I don't think right. anybody would have blinked because I think people are used to power metal bands and metal bands doing this type of thing now, but in, you know, in the early 90s, that, that, that was a little shocking, I guess, at the time. And, and after doing two Keepers albums, all of a sudden you're going to Pink Bubbles and Chameleon. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. what the hell's happening here? I know, right? <laughs> 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 all right, my number 10. I don't have, uh, I don't have the hard copy. Uh, it's a digital thing. Uh, 2003's Rabbit Don't Come Easy. I like that album. Good album, right? Uh, Mickey D, man playing yeah. up a storm on that album i think he was a great fit for this band too bad that was kind of like a one and done thing but uh well man. i think he did half of it and mark cross did the other part right they I both th were, did work on it. or i think I, I think mickey did the bulk of it but yeah he, he didn't do all the drums on it yet but man yeah. great job great job um you got uh, uh sasha gerstner coming on board here right replacing roland grappow great guitar right. player as well uh yeah just a little sign, open your life, liar, great, great song. I just think yeah. it's a real, it's one of those like start to finish. It's just a total rage of the whole album. There's really not a lot of let up on there. It's pure yep. speed metal the whole way through. Great melodies, great playing. Uh, you know, considering that again, more lineup changes, I think they just kept the pace, uh, kept the focus and just cranked out another really strong album. So I, you know, don't Agreed. like the title of the of the of the album. Don't really like the cover. Rabbit don't come easy. Kind of lame. But you know what? The songs more than make up for that. So I think. it's one of my favorite titles for them. My favorite covers. I love it. Really? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> it's tongue in cheek, right? They were they did that tongue in cheek thing very well. Yeah. Yeah, because it works now because it's not Pink Bubbles Go Eight. I guess Pink Bubbles right. Go Eight was so different, and now you got the Rabbit Don't Come Easy, but. The rabbit was Halloween, and it was Halloween doing what they do best. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it worked great. I was like, "This is this is awesome." <laughs> <laughs> but good album, regardless. Really good album. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, so where are we at? Nine, right? Number nine. So my nine is Pink Bubbles. Uh, same reason, like I've been saying for Chameleon. Um, I didn't really like it at the time either. It was so weird. I still still think the cover is awful. Yeah. And the title's weird. The whole intro, that 36 second uh, intro that Kiski does, it's like a little nursery rhyme or a hymn or something. Yeah. It's so bizarre. <laughs> but it fits the, the title, so why not, right? But uh, Kids of the Century, Back on the Streets, number one, um, Someone's Crying, Mankind, all the ones you said. Uh, the Chance they used to play for many years, that was yep. in their set. Yep. That's another great one. Um, again, aside from heavy metal hamsters, I really can probably play the whole album and enjoy it for what it is. It's it's a uh, my, I guess it's my kiss unmasked. There you go. 
just not as good because I love Kiss Unmasked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate, again, Halloween doing something that's a little more commercial, and I think they, for the most part, did a pretty good plan, though, that afterwards maybe they learned from it on another record coming up, which we'll get to that. It seems like we're both we're both going to have that album somewhere a little further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to say what it is, but I think <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yep. All right. Number nine, Gambling with the Devil, 2007. Mm. Love that uh, album. Yeah, uh, another heavy album. Uh, yes. You know, the band's got the formula. They're milking it, but they're milking yep. it in a great way. Uh, yeah. There's nothing here that's going to say, wow, you know, like you said, they're, they're not doing anything different here. But the production of this album, just by Charlie, uh, how, how does he say, Bauerfiend? Is that how he says his name? Something like yeah. that. Just killer production of this album. I, I think this is one of, this album just sounds absolutely huge. I mean, I know a lot of their albums have great production, but man, this one just like explodes. Uh, yeah. Some great tracks on here. You know, uh, The Saints, killer song. Mm -hmm. um, what else we got here? Paint a New World, The Bells of uh, Seven Hells. Great song, yep. As Long As I Fall. I mean, it's just such a, a potent album. You know, 12 tracks, it doesn't overstay its welcome. You know, you got the crack the riddle, little opening thing there, whatever. Uh, you know, just great, great stuff. Kill It. I mean, that's, I, I consider yeah. Kill It the real album opener here. Another great album opener for these guys, right? Yep. Just absolutely destroys. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, really good album, I think. Um, one of their, yep. you know, one of their better ones. And uh, kind of a cool album cover, I think, you know? Yeah. Again, like kind of dark, but like, you know, but still kind of interesting. A lot going on there. And that was a great tour, too. That's when they toured with Halloween. I mean, uh, Gamma Ray in America. Yeah, that was a big deal here. That was a really big yeah. deal here. So great, that's, great tour. That's my number eight. Back to yep. you for number. I mean, that was my number nine. Back to you for number eight. Number eight is Gambling. That's my number eight. I love it. Great album. Um, let me see. I got to go back to the track list in here. Um, the, the two singles were great, As Long As I Fall. And uh, what was the other one? Paint. Uh, what's the paint song? I got to go back to the track here. Uh, oh, paint paint, a, new paint a New World. Yeah, Paint a New World's excellent. Yeah. I was a rager. Um, and uh, As Long As I Fall is a great single. The Bells of the Seven Hells is awesome. Falling yeah. into Pieces. I Am E. Um, like you said, the Saints and Kill It was really rough, heavy song. I I don't really skip anything on this album. Can do it is kind of meh. That's one of those those catchy, poppy kind of songs that they always throw in there. Still listenable though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fine, but um, yeah. I think this definitely is, is it deserves to be in the ten. It was a good, um, it's a good rebound after what came before that for gambling. So what, what came before that? Uh, before gambling was the keeper, uh, part three legacy. Yeah. I think they rebounded from that. Great. Yeah. It's definitely a better album. I agree. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. My number eight is uh, from 1998. Uh, love this album better than raw. Yes. Killer. Love it. Killer, killer. Uh, it doesn't get much better than kicking off with a song called Push. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like face melting stuff right there, right? I mean, it's just, yeah. when these guys wanted to get heavy, man, they, whew. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, it's like their painkiller for me. Push is kind of like their painkiller. Uh, it's yep. awesome stuff. Uh, Falling Higher is great. Midnight Sun. Hey Lord. Doesn't get, I mean, that's, when they play that live, awesome, right? Um, great song. Yeah, absolutely. You got uh, Michael Whitecath. That was one of two singles. Yeah, yeah. Great, great song. Great song. Um, yeah, you got Whitecath and Roland Grappau just going nuts on this album. There's some great soloing yeah. on this album. Uh, you got the song yeah. Revelation, which is kind of like a prog metal song for them. Uh, Handful of Pain. Uh, great song. One, easily one of their heaviest albums, I think. Probably maybe yeah, top three or four heaviest. Song. Yeah. Yeah, I don't skip a song on that album. Yeah, no, there's, there's nothing skippable here. And uh, but, cool album cover, I think. And even I even like the back. Yeah. And you know what I like, too, is after, I think, or starting with Chameleon, they got back to 
doing the little animation with the pumpkins inside for the, each of the lyrics for the songs. Yes, yeah, yeah. Had a good time with all the little pumpkins and what they're doing and their scenarios and stuff, just like when they did the uh, reunion tour and they had the projection screen and they had the pumpkins live too, doing things. That was a lot of fun actually, yeah, watching that. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're at seven, right? Number seven, yep. Seven, I'm going with the rabbit. Rabbit don't come easy. Like you said, it, it's such a great, consistent album from start to finish. Yeah, it is. Uh, what came after? That came after Dark Ride. So I think that was a better rebound because Dark Ride, like we were saying, is so dark, too dark. Yep. And then this opens up with just a little sign, which has had that happy, the bright guitars and the productions back in its. It's just a, a classic Halloween, like a Eagle Fly Free type of song. Yes. Yep. Yep. But um, you know, then you got Open Your Life. Uh, the tune is one of more of those uh, radio type songs, and Never Be a Star. But Liar was real heavy. The yeah, Liar's great. Uh, yep. Sun for the World, I think, had that little Middle Eastern feel to it, right in the beginning. Yep. Yep. Uh, Backs against the wall. Nothing to say. I mean, hell, uh, hell was made in heaven. I can go through the whole album. I don't think I skip anything. It's cool. Yeah, I think and most I, of the ones we're talking about from here on in are just kind of like that. I mean, just really consistent start to finish. Yeah, yeah. and I dig, I dig the album, Mark. I, I think the cover and the title is, is cool. It's fun. It's tongue-in-cheek. You got to think about it for a second, and then you get it. You know, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, most of their stuff is, is tongue-in-cheek. I think they do a good job of that throughout their catalog, which is yeah. kind of what sets them apart. I don't, yeah, I don't think they ever really took themselves too seriously, which is kind of cool. All right, my number seven was actually higher up. And so, you know, we before Rich and I went uh, started taping here, we talked about, you know, how much movement we had in our list as we were kind of re-listening and going through these for the last couple of weeks. And I actually had this a few notches higher. But then the more I listened to some of the other albums, I was like, man, as great as this album is, I think I like a couple of others just a little bit better. So, but if you ask me next week, it might pop back to where it originally was. I'm going with uh, Master of the Rings at number seven from 1994. Mm. Great album. Uh, and I, I listened to this a ton when it first came out. And yep. I was okay with the vocal change. I mean, I love, and I love Kiski. I love Kiski, but for me, I was like, Kiski's great, but man, those other two albums at the time, I was like, those sucked. So I wanted Halloween to go back to doing what they do best. And I think this album brings them right back to just that, you know, chugging power metal that we know and love with all the blazing guitars and the melodies and all that stuff. So you got uh, Andy Darris and Uni Kush coming on board here. Uh, plenty of great anthems. I mean, Mr. Ego, great. Yeah. Why? Great. Soul Survivor, killer. Where the Rain Grows, Killer, uh, Perfect Gentleman, Secret Alibi. I mean, just, you know, yep. top to bottom, really strong. Uh, you know, you got Wycath and Grappow doing a great job uh, with the lead guitars and the riffs. Uh, and another kind of cool, mysterious album cover, I think. So I like this album a lot. Could rank higher, right? Originally was. Uh, I, this is definitely a top album of theirs, but they have a lot of top albums. Yeah. That's the thing, you know? So Yeah. When they did the reunion tour, they actually played three from that. I know, yeah. Between America and over in Europe, they either did Why, Soul Survivor, and Perfect Gentleman. Yep, yep. Yeah, it shows you the, the good lasting power of this album, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, um, we're at six, right? Yep. Six, I'm going with Time of the Oath. This is another thing that I, that I switched recently, too, but I still, I still like Time of the Oath. But there's something about the production on that album. I, I don't know. I think it needs a remaster or something. I, it doesn't have the, the punch that Raw has, or it doesn't have the brightness that Master has. That's the only thing I think it suffers from. But Good again, song, though. yeah, I mean, We Burn, Steel Tormentor are such great openers. Oh, yeah. One, two punch. They're just killing you. And then Wake Up the Mountain and Power are such great anthems with the twin leads and the, the big melody and the harmonies. It's great. Forever in One is like one of my favorite ballads they ever wrote. Uh, and then Before the War is Heavy Again uh, and King Will Be Kings, Mission Motherland is great. Time of the Oath, the title track. It's just, again, another one. 
even the ones like if I knew or uh, anything my mom don't like and a million to one, they're not my favorites, but I, I won't skip them. Right. You know? Yeah. I agree with everything you just said. It's my number six as well. Very, very cool. I'm yeah. a, really heavy, very melodic. Cool. Very cool um, artwork too. I yeah, I always like this this album cover art, and I I like the back as well. So get a little better shot of it yeah. here. It's nice. Uh, yeah, I love the pumpkins. It's a nice nod to the Keeper albums. And it totally is. It totally is. And I think Andy sounds just absolutely fantastic on this album. It's like you know here, Andy sounds perfectly comfortable. I'm I'm the guy in Halloween now. He's feeling good in his own skin. Uh, you mentioned yeah. all the great songs on here, Steel Tormentor, We Burn, Wake Up the Mountain, Power, I mean, Forever and One, uh, I Like a Million to One as well. All memorable songs, even the softer stuff. Uh, really, really good album. So I, you know, yeah. I had a hard time with these two because I kind of like these almost equally. So originally this was higher yeah. than this one. And then I yeah. re-listened to them, I'm like, uh, I think I kind of like this one a little bit better, but it, I could change my mind on these tomorrow. You know, so they're both really What good. year was that? 93 for, or 94 for, 94 for Master and 95 or 96 for Oath. 96 for Time of the Oath, yeah. So those came out at a great time, too, because you know what was happening in America with music. Oh, yeah. Yeah, metal was dead and, here. Yeah. And I could have cared less what was happening here. Aside yeah. from, I enjoyed Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, but everything else I could throw in the garbage can. Yeah, same with me. So when, when those two, when those two albums came out and then I found out about it, Gamma Ray putting out records, and then Ice Earth and Blind Guardian and Camelot and everybody else. That was the saving grace. Yeah, it was a game was changer, right? Yeah, it was a game changer. Yeah. Something yeah. new was happening in the game, and, and these guys were putting out great music, and they were keeping the traditional heavy metal alive. It was yep. awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. All right, number five, the top five. Here we go. Yes. Going with Jericho. Wow, okay. Love Walls of Jericho, even uh, though it's a little it's a little rough. You know, it's their first album, but those songs on that album still, even regardless of them being a, a little rough, like Ride the Sky, um, Gorgar, Metal Invaders, and if you get the CD version now, you get all the tracks that are on the EPs too, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, which makes it even better. Yep. You get Starlight and Murder and Warrior, but um, whenever I do a playlist like Ride the Sky. Guardians, Phantoms of Death, Metal Invaders, Gorgar, How Many Tears. I mean, I put five or six songs from this album alone in a playlist. Yeah. So even though even though it's not the best production-wise, it's a little rough for the time, there's too many classics on here for it not to be in my top five. Yeah. And I will say, you know, when we saw that the Halloween United Tour, God, what was that, two years ago now? I'm trying to remember when that was. About two years I mean, as much as I love a lot of these songs we've been talking about, man, when they played the shit from the first album and the yeah. EPs, I, yeah. that was just like heaven for me because it's like, I, yeah. I, you know, I haven't seen them play some of those songs in a long, long time. Yeah. So, really cool. And people lost their minds too. Oh, totally. And I remember, did you go, you were at the Irving Plaza show, right? Yes, I was. Yeah. I didn't see you because there was a thousand people there. Oh my God. It was so packed. It was just sweltering in there. It's so packed, but man, everybody, yeah. no matter where you were, people were just totally into it. It was like such a, such a good time. Such a yeah. good time. Yeah. And it's on, I don't know if you can still see it. You got enough light. You can see it's on my jacket, the Jericho yep. patch. Yep. Yeah. Right in the so, middle there. Um, definitely has a special place in, in my heart. So Lance, that definitely is in my top five. There you go. Cool. All right. My number five uh, might surprise you a little bit here. Straight out of hell. Wow. Love it. Love it. Love I, it. I, I think it's so cool how yours and mine, we only pick the same thing in the same spot, like maybe twice and everything else is totally different. Totally shuffle. different. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, this uh, big, bright, energetic, crushingly heavy album, it's got some mm -hmm. just absolutely standout tracks. You know, you mentioned uh, Nabatea killer yeah. uh i love world of war burning sun mm -hmm. uh waiting for the thunder is killer the title track is killer great chorus uh i i think andy sounds absolutely ferocious on this album i just yeah. think this is one of their heaviest albums it's really consistent uh right. great production great riffs just uh really energetic it's it's a long album sort of but not too long and uh <clears throat> excuse me and I just, I just dig it. And I even kind of dig the kind of silly cover. 
Yeah, it's cool. It's fun. Like I said, I just think it would have been better if it was a, a, a painting or a drawing or something. It would have given yeah. it more life. I like the concept of it. Uh, I yeah. agree with you, though. Yeah, it's very kind of digitally looking. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. but I love it. Conceptually, it's very cool. I hope when they put out their new album with the reunion of the band, it's back to a painting. It's not <clears> digital. Yeah, we'll see. But th this album and, and the next one that I'm going to talk about actually were the ones that flip flopped the most in this list, and they overcame these two because these two were actually uh, where these these two are are now. So. That's what was really, it's, it's I, as I kept re-listening to these albums, I'm like, man, I forgot how much I really, really like these albums. So, back um, to you. All right, so top four kicks off with Raw. Better than Raw. Better than Raw, there you go. Yes, that is um, top to bottom. Again, another album that I don't skip anything on the song, this album. The only thing I thought when I got it, though, is I thought Push was not a great song to lead off with. I thought Falling Higher would have been better. It's a little more of a classic Halloween feel. Well, Push is just ferocious. I mean, it's just, that's just it you know, balls to the wall, brutal almost. It's really brutal it's, for them. But it's weird how that instrumental before it, it's got a very classical music thing to it. Yep, yep. And it sets it up and then all of a sudden, and then it goes into Push. It's like, two different vibes so yeah it's like what what just happened there right yep <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe well since it's called deliberately instrumental limited preliminary preliminary prelude maybe that's why it's called deliberate because it's deliberately a like a you know a distraction something out of left field yep yep yeah, yeah. um but yeah i love this album so much the singles i can hey lord don't spit on my mind. Handful of pain. Midnight Sun, one of my favorites. Um, so not an album that I, I skip any tracks. I go right through it. Yep, it's a good one. One of their best, easily. Yeah, easily. All right, so here's the part of my list that totally is different than where you ranked it. Uh, yeah. My number four is Seven Sinners. Wow. Yeah. So. And this, you know, this one was, when I originally started putting this list together, this one was right around the middle of the pack, and I was okay with that, but then I went and I listened to these all again a couple times, I'm like, man, you know what, I think I really like this album a lot, even more than I actually thought I did. Um, mm -hmm. This album is so, again, one of those albums that kind of sticks out a little bit in the catalog. It is so crushingly heavy. Uh, probably the heaviest thing they've ever done. I think Where the Sinners Go might yeah. be the heaviest song they've ever done. And it, it ain't really even power metal. I don't even know what you call it. It's just really brutally heavy. Yeah. Um, Are You Metal, also pretty brutal. It's got some cool keyboards on it. Uh, yeah. Who Is Mr. Madman is also cool. You got you know all these question songs, right? Are You Metal, Who Is Mr. Madman? I don't know, but yeah. we like it anyway, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> World of Fantasy is really cool and majestic sounding. Uh, you Stupid Mankind, yeah. it's got some really good riffs and just crazy drumming. Far in the Future yeah. is just immense sounding, epic, powerful. I, I don't know, I think it, that's one of their better closers because we've talked a lot about some of these albums that are really long at the second half. Sometimes it dips a little bit in quality. Yeah. Uh, I think this album just goes out with a complete bang. So I don't know, I think this album for me has really stood the test of time and I'd say it's just, it's a little bit different for them because it's just, it's just brutally heavy. And I like yeah, it for it, you know, but I agree with you. Not a lot of variety on it because it's just so in your yeah. face. But I think that's why yeah. I like it so much because it's like it's an album. It's like they got all of that out of their system on this album. And I yeah. think I like this album so much better than The Dark Ride, which I think The Dark Ride, they tried. They wanted to kind of do the same thing. It didn't really work in the same way. Maybe because the yeah. production is different. I don't know. But I, I love this album for the production and the heaviness, whereas that album kind of like, eh, didn't really, and maybe that was their intent, but it didn't really work. I think it works here. So Yeah. Interesting. Not a great album okay. cover, though, I will say. I'm not, not a big fan of the album cover. Yeah, and, and the, the video for Are You Metal was doing the, um, uh, the whole Saw thing with the torture. Yeah. I thought that could have been a more, more creative. They just basically ripped off the Saw franchise. Yeah, yeah. Well, which was happening at the time, right? So, it was. Yeah. It was huge, yeah. Um, okay, number three, Keeper Part Two. Of course, I mean, it's such a classic. The first, you know, part one and two are such classics. Yep. But 
there's a couple songs on there that I've always never really thought they lived up to part one. So on part two, there is, let me see. Of course, Eagle Fly for Great. But then you go into You Always Walk Alone and Rise and Fall. And I always thought that they were just an odd two. Um, I don't know. They don't have the same energy and punch that March of Time or the epicness of Keeper, the song, or the catchiness of Dr. Steen, um, or Save Us. Yep, Save it's Us just, is great. Yeah, Save Us and, and March of Time alone are amazing. But I don't know. They don't work back to back. And then they're followed by Dr. Steen and We Got the Right. I don't know. Those couple songs, I listened to them again when I was getting ready for this. And they're okay, but I don't find them as great as Eagle Fly Free, Dr. Steen, March of Time, I Want Out, Keeper, The Song, and Save Us. Yeah. Uh, this is also my number three. And uh, it's really interesting when it comes to this album. And I've been feeling this way about this album for a while. This um, is not nearly as good as, as the first one. Right. And I think we all knew that back when it first came out, but we were still like, I think in love with this and the idea of this as a yeah. kind of one, two punch with the first one. Uh, right. I think this album out of the two of them has not held up nearly as well. And I think uh -huh. the reason why it's my number three, and I think I'm giving it my number three because of sentimental value. I think right. half of this album, I love like, big time and like you said the other half of it, it's like it's okay yeah. uh and i think because i love the songs i love so much i talk about this a lot uh on the yeah. show about sometimes you have an album where there's songs that you just love so much and maybe the rest of the album you don't really like that much but because you feel so strongly about those handful of songs it elevates the album up perhaps higher than it should for exactly. an album that maybe is a little more consistent because we talked about a lot of albums over the last 15, 20 minutes that yeah. start to finish are absolutely incredible. So it's like, it almost, I'm almost thinking that if we were to have this discussion again, like maybe five years from now, that this yeah. would probably sink a lot lower. I'm thinking. I think I, that's where I was flopping between that and better than raw, because I think better than raw consistently consistency wise is a better album than keeper, but the, the value of keeper part two alone and the songs that are so great on that album that are just untouchable, like you said, it elevates the couple, the two or three that you're just kind of like, you know, they're okay, but they just don't live up to the other ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a tough, it's a tough battle. And I think the seeds of Pink Bubble Go Ape were already starting to appear on this album. Where those couple of songs that I was mentioning, like We Got the Right and Rise and Fall. Yep. And uh, what's, the, what's the third one I said? Uh... Is that March of Time? Uh, but I mean, yeah, like Eagle Fly Free is great. You Always Walk Alone, great. But man, I Want Out is great. Keeper of the Seven Keys is just fantastic. Save Us is great. Yeah, I mean, it's great stuff. And the, the album cover is fantastic. You know, I mean, it's, so cool. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, I played the hell out of this when it first came out. But yeah, uh, but, I, but I remember even then, I was kind of like, yeah, I love this, but it's not quite as good as the first one. Uh huh. And I see that more as time goes on. So I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting uh, to see, like like I said, five years from now, if we still consider this a number three or all of a sudden some of these other albums we've been raving about kind of overtake it a little bit. That might be the case. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think, I think I, like I said, I think I gave it a number three out of pure sentimental value because um, yeah. maybe it's not quite three worthy. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Number two, what do you got? Going with the rings, the master yeah. of the rings. What a what a epic, great rebound and return to form. Yep, yep. After Chameleon and, and Pink Bubbles. Um, Soul Survivor, Where the Rain Grows, Why, Mr. Ego, Perfect Gentleman, The Game Is On, Still We Go. I love Still We Go. That's another Grap House song. Yep. And the album actually ends strong like it begins. And it ends with Still We Go. And that's a, another great song. In the Middle of a Harpy was a great ballad. Uh, they, they, they just got it right with this album. It's upbeat. It feels good. It's got the, the great guitar sounds. It's got the melodies. It's got the harmonies. It's got everything you want from Halloween. That's I, I can't find anything wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a great one. 
<clears throat> it's a great one. Yeah. yeah, it was that was originally my number four. And uh, like oh. I said, my list kind of like made a lot of ch- had a lot of a lot of moving and shaking going on in my list over the last couple of days. Yeah, I know. I spent the last hour figuring all this out. <laughs> Plenty here. Rich, Rich is probably like, oh, I'm hoping Pete tells me, can we push this back a half hour? Because I'm not quite sure what my order is here, right? <laughs> like I said, I literally, within the last 10 minutes, I, I shifted two or three albums. Yeah, no, it's, I do it all the time. It's, it's, this is yeah. not easy. Some people think it's easy just because, you know, you try to be, we're trying to be really honest with how we really interpret these albums. It's not just like, let's yeah. just throw a list together, right? It's like a lot yeah. of thought goes into this and a lot of re-listening and a lot of like, kind of like, you know, analyzing yeah. and all this kind of stuff. It's not, it's a, it's a time consuming ordeal doing these things. And especially, exactly. you know, we got a catalog, 15 albums. It's not like, you know, I've done a lot of these yeah. album rankings where it's like, you know, three, four, five albums. And that's, you know, not know. quite, not quite the job, yeah. but this is like, man, this is like epic here. All right. So my number yep. two, uh, Walls of Jericho from 85. Mm-hmm. Could have been my number one. My, well, we both have the same number one, obviously, but uh, yeah, this is, I, a oh, man, I grew up with this stuff. I mean, this is just for me immense. And like Rich said, with this uh, expanded edition, you get all the the tracks from the EPs on there. It makes for a killer, killer album. So many yeah. great songs, man. You know, it's like Victim of Fate. That's man, great stuff. You know, uh, Ride the Sky. Ride, yeah. Ride the Sky is absolutely immense. Uh, Guardian. Jeez, Phantoms of Death, Metal Invaders, Gorgar, Starlight. Well, I mean, Jesus. Start to finish. doesn't get much better. Well, it does get much better. So it gets a little bit better with our number one, I guess. But, uh, you know, and again, this is really different. It's amazing how different this album sounds compared to Keeper of the Seventh Keys Part One. Um, But I think this is a really, really important album in the history of speed metal, certainly power metal. You know, there's even a lot of thrashy moments on these. This I mean, this is just like, it was so much coming out of Germany at this time. You know, you had these guys, you had Destruction, you had Creator. I mean, all these bands, it's like, you know, really killing it and, you know, leading the pack and really showing that, uh, you know, Germany knew what was going on when it came to metal. Absolutely. That was 1985. Yeah. Yep. 1985. And that was Kai Hansen singing, too. That was before Kiski came into the band. I know, I know. And that, that has a lot to do with the different sound, but I think they went much, you know, they slowed things down a bit for the next album, a little more melodic, where this is just like fast and furious, in your face, um, but great songwriting, killer guitar work. Yeah. Um, the arrangements are great, just like such, you know, and that cover, I man, I just, you know, fell in love, love with that this stuff. Yeah, it's great oh, stuff. Cool. I <clears throat> great <know>. stuff. <laughs> Well, I we think, know what our number one is, right? So let's let's talk the greatness of uh, Keeper of the Seven Keys Part One because that's uh, both uh, of our number ones. The, the greatness. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Where do you start? Uh, there's only eight songs, though. It's all it needed. <clears throat> I know, but let's see. How long? Halloween was 13 minutes long, so yep, that yep. took a lot of time. But it's only as I look at the details here, it's only a 36 minute album. So not terribly long. Not at all. Not at all. But gets in and it gets out and it gives you your bang for your buck. Yep. You know? Kicks your ass and gets out of Dodge and hopefully, yep. you know, at the time I would just, I would play this album and then I would take yep. the needle on my record player and I'd put it right back at the beginning again yep. and start all over. It's what I did it all the time. Um, well, you know what's cool about this is that <clears throat> this album, it has the aggression and the heaviness from Jericho on stuff like Twilight of the Gods yep. or I'm Alive or I'm Alive and Halloween but then you have the stuff that would be on Keeper Part 2 with like the more melodic songs like Future World or yeah. a little t- a little time yep where songs could be almost like a radio single like Future World could have been instead of it being Halloween for the video they could have done one for Future World as well it would have been huge yeah yeah and was it just me? I used to hate when when they did the video for Halloween and they they like what chopped off like four minutes from it. That used to yeah. piss me off because like they would take out all that great solo and all that great like kind of like unison stuff they were doing. I'm like, you can't take out the jamming part of the song. It's like the best part of it. Man. It's so intense. Ugh, just what a great epic, man! One of the best like metal epics ever, I think. Yeah, that and the Keeper song too. Those the two of them Ugh. are two two of the best epic songs up there with like. Iron Maiden's Rhyming Ancient Mariner, or I don't know, what else? I, I can't even think right now. <laughs> well, Maiden did a bunch of them, you know? So, yeah. yeah. 
It's didn't they? Are- didn't they play? I'm trying to remember when they when we saw, when they did the uh, Halloween United tour. Didn't they do them both back to back, or fairly close to each other in the set list? I think it opened with Halloween, and then Keeper, the whole song came later. Came later. I'll tell you, I can't remember like when they played them in the set list. I just know they played them both, and it was pretty magical hearing them both in the same yeah. set. You know, yeah. Yeah, they didn't leave a lot of stones unturned on that that show. It was like three hours. It was like it's like everything you wanted to hear. They played. It was really. They played really nice. a nice, a nice variety. Even did one, they because they did two nights in New York, yep. right? It was two nights. Yeah. Yep, so the one nights. night, the night that I was there, they did a song from Pink Bubbles. They did Kids of the Century. I was yeah because they did that. I that was night one. Was it the night one? The, the Saturday night show. Pretty sure because I, I remember hearing that. I think I went on Sunday because th- I think the one night that the other night they did another song from, I want to say seven sinners. Yeah. I don't remember. I've seen too many shows. <laughs> Trying to remember set list is crazy. But I remember they did something from pink, bu- uh, pink bubbles tonight. I was there and I loved it. Cool. So there you have it, everybody. An hour's worth of Halloween discussion. Yes. 15 albums. Uh, well, Rich and I were on, on point with uh, a couple of them. Couple yeah. of them totally different, but I think for the most part we are we are in agreement on a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah, it's just it's but a really great catalog. Really good. Catalog. It is, but I think it's cool the way ours don't match up in many places because you have one reason where you put them, and then I gave the other reason where I put them as well. So it kind of shines a different two different perspectives on why those albums are good for the two of us. Yep, absolutely. So yeah. So for everybody watching, if you want to list your. Uh, 15 all 15 albums in the order you prefer or maybe your top five or your top 10 please go right ahead be interesting to take a look at the comments to see uh what everybody's got and uh don't forget to visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube all the damn time rich you got anything you want to plug on your end um i'm still writing you know reviews when i get to them for the asylum and, and brave words i do stuff for the metal hall so check that um I'm working on a, a comic book for the Diamond Head song, Am I Evil? So if you go to the Am I Evil page on Facebook, there's um, information about that. And there's an um, Indiegogo going on for it. So we're trying to get that to come to light. We've been doing some uh, interviews and videos with uh, people supporting it. We did a um, three-hour marathon on Facebook when the Indiegogo launched. So that was a lot of fun. Bobby from um, Overkill came on, Jack Frost. Oh, cool. Alan Tech from Hades came on. So that was that was a lot of fun to to promote the Indiegogo nights. So that was cool. Awesome. So that's the that's the most recent thing. And um, thanks for having me again. I hope to do another one soon. It's a pleasure. Uh, Rich will be back. So uh, Rich and I'll plan our next outing together. And uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow with more stuff. Have a good one, Rich. Thanks, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Thanks everybody. <laughs>